Hello, I'm Don Hinkleman and I'm from uh, uh, Sapporo Gakuin University in Japan and I'm happy to present today at this Digital Thursday and I'd like to thank your Professor uh, Joanna for inviting me. Uh, we met at the European Call Conference in Belgium and uh, uh, she kindly uh, told me about your Digital Thursday um, events and uh, requested that I talk about ethnography or research methods for language learning for blended language learning environments task ethnography so as you can see here here is a uh, uh, some slides that I'm going to show you and I hope that uh, you can have some questions or uh, comments as we talk or after we talk um, during this presentation. Um, first of all, uh, I want to say that uh, uh, the question that we are asking today is how to study a learning ecology. Now, look at this classroom. Uh, what you can see are people. You can see furniture. You can see devices. You can see uh, things on the wall. You can see things uh, growing and, and teachers walking around. This is an ecology. This is a learning ecology. And uh, the key points I'm going to say today is that learning is blended. It's not just online. It's not just face-to-face. -face. It's blended. Teaching is bricolage. Teaching is making do with what you have. And research is ecological. It is, it is uh, contextual. So, how to study a computer-assisted or blended language environment? Well, the motivation for this came from back in 2000, the year 2000, when Kern and Warshower said, call, or computer-assisted language learning, needs to be more contextual. We need to change to contextual inquiry and more ethnographic studies are needed. So, what is contextual inquiry? It's the, it's the opposite of scientific inquiry, which is uh, for specific either-or questions. Uh, contextual in inquiry is for examining whole contexts, complicated environments, rather than testing yes or no, better or best. Uh, what are some types of contextual inquiry? Well, there's action research and there's ethnography. These are two types. Action research is more insider. You're doing it. You are the person. And the aim is to implement change in the classroom, in the educational process, and document what's happened. Ethnography is more an outsider looking in. And uh, it can be micro, which is look at a task being done, look at the, describe the ethnography of that task, or it can be macro, the whole institution, or meso, the classroom or the course structure. Now, what do I mean by bricolage? Bricolage is a French word, and it's the act of making do. And this is what teachers do. They don't always plan or they don't always do the ideal uh, procedure, but they configure a classroom given the tools they have, given the devices that, that students have or the school has, and they, you, you make do and with that when you do a learning task. A bricoleur is a teacher who configures techniques, tools, software, hardware, furniture, screens to do a task. Blending is a mix, a blend of online and on-site, face-to-face, digital, and paper. This is uh, uh, the first edition of the book, Blending Technologies in Second Language Classrooms, which I wrote with Paul Gruba uh, uh, in 2012. And in it, we describe the process of language learning it is not devices, but a process of actions, timings, groupings, spaces, texts, and tools. Okay, Those are the dimensions of, of the language learning 
process. In a second edition, I wrote about the strategy of blending, which is flipped learning, task-based learning, active learning, and gamification. Uh, a community. It is not devices, but uh, blending is a community of practice with learners and teachers. So, we've taken this journey from scientific thinking, which has dominated the research approaches, to ecological thinking. We've gone from separated entities, isolating variables, making independent variables, and comparing the tools and making generalizations. But since every teacher is a bricoleur, since every, every instance is different and unique, as you configure your classroom, I don't believe we can make generalizations, but we can get insights from what teachers do. That's why describing what is happening and describing what is working is more important than proving something is better than something else. That's the process of ethnography. So, the scientific research approach promotes hypothesis testing, experimental studies, comparison studies, but ecological research approaches are more qualitative, interpretive, they're longitudinal, they're looking at action research cycles over many years. So it's not just a trendy innovation, but something that has been tested over time. They are descriptive, using ethnographic techniques of thick description. And we, use, we look at blended learning frameworks. Now, this is the typical view of technology. It's me against the devices me against the tools. But let's, let's change that image to one of an ecology. So I'm going to show uh, a different metaphor that is not outside of me, is not a separated device, is not an invading threat, and is not a triumphant savior, but is instead is inside of me, inside of us in this classroom, is an ecosystem is a process and is a hybrid, human material hybrid. This is ecological thinking. This is an ecosystem, an individual, a population, a community, an ecosystem. This is another image of an ecosystem, a natural ecosystem. Now let's look at classrooms. Here is a learning ecology combining research, individual thinking, design, putting it all together. That's someone's image. Here is the ecology of artifacts in a classroom. A teacher, a textbook, a desk, a table, a bag, a curtain, a light, a book, and add to this digital devices as well. Here's some of the human reactions that are happening in this ecology. You have somebody shouting or sneezing, two people hogging, working on this, working on this, someone coming in late, a teacher talking. All of these things happening in the classroom. Here's a picture of blended language learning in one of the classrooms at my university. I'm in uh, Sapporo Gakuin University, which is in northern Japan, in the island of Hokkaido. And uh, actually, it's snowing right now outside. It's cold. And uh, we are have some normal tools you may see in many schools. Here is one of our teachers, and he's using a screen, and he's using an overhead projector or document projector onto the screen. Here are some students at a table. They're facing each other. They're ready for group work or pair work. Here he is. He's talking. So the talking is part of the ecology. Look at the way they're sitting. 
Look at their attention. He's using gestures. His hands are part of the ecology of learning. Here's another classroom which shows a blended classroom. You have tables and chairs in the center and, and uh, computers on the periphery. They could be notebook computers. These are wired computers. And up front, here is a teacher doing an oral test, a one-to-one -one oral test, while the others are doing other tasks at their computer. This is a typical blended classroom at Sporogakuin University. And as I said, here's the teacher's area, a printer. Here are the, the tables and chairs in fours. So you have multiple pair work uh, connections. And then on the periphery, you have wired computers. And in the back, sometimes you have other technologies, face-to-face -face technologies. Here is a double line pair switching. So students can do a dialogue together or a small presentation, then quickly switch to the next person, repeat it again to a new listener. So what we have are face-to-face -face technologies in this paradigm. And we have online technologies, and that's what we mean when we say blended language learning. You combine these two. So a blended language learning environment does not need scientific testing. It needs contextual inquiry. So ethnography and action research. And if you're interested in more details on this, I can send you some chapters of, of my book which talk about these uh, methodologies. In ethnography, there's classroom ethnography, institutional ethnography, and task ethnography. And I'm going to explain a little bit about task ethnography today. First of all, you have to have a framework. What is a framework? A framework is, is how you describe the learning and teaching in a classroom. Now, here are one, two, three, four, five, six different categories in a blended learning framework. These are dimensions. First of all, the types of learning that are going on, the types of actions. You have lectures, which are narrative. You have interactive pair discussions. You have adaptive learning, where individualized learning, where it changes as the student learns. You have communicative learning, uh, group work, pair work, discussions, and productive learning. These are the categories from Laura Lard in her book on, on um, the learning process. And productive categories are giving demonstrations and performances. You also have groupings is a dimension. Individual and pair groupings. Small and large group. Timings. Is it happening live or is it happening recorded? Asynchronous. Is it happening in a single session or multi-session? Simultaneous or parallel? Spaces. Are you in the classroom or online? Are you home or community? You describe each of these dimensions including the texts. Is it words spoken? Is it images? Is it written words? Is it audio? Is it visual? How are these combined, these texts? Finally, is it tools? And although call tends to emphasize tools, it's only one-sixth of the dimensions. Digital, analog, material, and electronic. And it may include the the table and the furniture as well. So these are these dimensions of technology and we can analyze these and describe them as they happen in our classroom. How do you do, how do, you do task ethnography? Let me tell you five steps for this. First step is you collect data by dimension, by these six dimensions. You collect photos, videos, forms, procedures, interviews, teaching materials, surveys, assessments. Then you describe each dimension, step by step, 
descriptions. Online and face-to-face -face descriptions of both things happening. In other words, what's happening on the screen and what's happening directly face-to-face. -face. You conceptualize these technologies. For example, here I've conceptualized the, the parallel line carouseling or fast pair switching. Um, I've talked about the action of a short speech. Uh, the synchronous activity, it's happening live. Okay? It's using tools such as hands, face, paper. Some students are using paper notes. Uh, I'm taking a video and showing it to them later. There's a camera and there's a learning management system which collects this. That's analog and digital. Okay? The texts are student written texts, not written by me. They're not from a textbook. They're words and visual and include facial responses. And they're standing in open space using a pair of work. Here we are. This is what I just described to you. Students in a pair talking then you, for two minutes, then the other person talks, gives a small speech, then they switch to the next person. So you're doing multiple repetitions. So that's sequencing or timing in that. You organize all of these little technologies into a task. Here's an example, a picture of a task. And I have a lecture, a carousel, fast pair switching, a performance, a live performance, and a video assessment where they look at the recording of what they did. All along here are some quizzes that they can do online to train themselves and learn it. And that is to do a task. In this case, the task is to give a speech about something that they can do well. Something that... Uh, how to do something, how to cook something, how to play basketball, how to, how to do some aspect of Japanese culture. Here's another descri uh, visual description of video assessment technology. Finally, the fifth and last stage here is you evaluate and assess the task. And you present these in your publication, in your reports, in your presentation, your research presentation. So, um, you assess the task performance. How well did they do this? You use can-do statements like from Sefer and analyze how well did they do that task. The modes of assessment can be self-assessment. Students can assess themselves. And we find that students can use the same rubrics as the teachers, if we train them in the rubrics and train them in the second language wording of those rubrics, and they can do it. Peer assessment. Uh, they watch videos or watch live performance of their peers. The teacher makes an assessment, and the whole class can watch and assess, too. These are all modes of assessment that you can put in a task ethnography. Finally, evaluations, questionnaires, interviews of the students in what they learned and what their perceptions of what helps them learn. So that is uh, what I call task ethnography. And I believe every teacher can use uh, the framework of dimensions to uh, do an ethnographic study of their classroom and of a particular task that they do in their classroom. Finally, this is my conclusion that contextual in inquiry requires action research and ethnography where you do outsider or insider uh, study of what's happening in your classroom and what's happening in the task, the language learning task that they are learning. And I hope you can apply this uh, instead of using comparison studies of uh, digital devices versus face-to-face uh, -face techniques, 
That's not necessary because we're recombining them on the fly as bricoleurs in our classrooms. And we just need to describe these environments that we're creating and what we are learning from our students and what our students are learning through the environments we create. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me to join you in Digital Thursday. And I hope we can have uh, some discussion following this. That's all. Thank you.